good morning. I'm saying good morning because I'm shooting today this video in the morning, which is kind of different because I usually uh, shoot videos or film videos uh, towards like the end of the day. So the natural lighting in my living room is just so bright and cheery right now. So that's why I'm in a separate part of my home. I'm I'm not, I usually uh, am filming like from my office, but today I wanted to just get some of that light in. So if you are new here, my name is Melissa. Welcome to my channel, Mental Health with Melissa. I am an LCSW, a licensed clinical therapist. I recently passed my dissertation defense for my PhD in psychology. I'm a clinical supervisor and I am a private practice owner. I do a lot of LCSW test prep on my channel. If you're studying to take that LCSW test right now, I have an LCSW uh, program, a uh, test prep program entitled Social Work Study with Melissa available for purchase at the link down below. And it is a full program, um, read more about it. Um, hopefully it is helpful to you. Today I'm going to be talking about medical social work. I know that medical social work is a popular uh, specific sort of uh, role in the realm of social work careers. And I have actually uh, worked in four different medical social work positions. And so I wanted to just sit down and talk about each of those roles, kind of the uh, ins and outs and the positives and maybe the not so positives of each of those, um, because I know that a lot of people are interested in medical social work. And so I wanted to just give you some of that information. So first, if you aren't familiar with what medical social work is. It is a, a position that a social worker holds in so, some sort of healthcare setting. So um, the most popular is known as a hospital social worker. So a social worker that works in a hospital setting, um, somebody that really engages and interacts with interdisciplinary medical team members such as uh, medical physicians, uh, nurse case managers, RNs, dietitians, um, you know, every kind of healthcare professional you can think of. If you're a medical social worker, depending on the healthcare field or the healthcare center that you work in, you may be working with these different professionals. So I'm going to start um, by talking about these four different medical social work positions that I've worked as um, in, an, in a timeline because um, I started as an intern working for an outpatient chemo cancer center, and then I worked as a, a discharge planner in med surge uh, social work, and then I worked as a, oh, I'm sorry, that was a, I worked as a hospice social worker first, and then the discharge um, inpatient med surge, and then in a um, clinic um, as a uh, outpatient primary care. Uh, social worker. So I'm going to go through each of these and if you're interested in learning more about them then stay tuned. So during my internship um, I, I I was a, a student um, in my MSW program and in that program they allow you to apply for internships depending on your concentration. My concentration was health social work so I specifically wanted to work in a hospital setting and work with cancer patients and so I was able to get an internship position at an outpatient chemo center actually at Cedar sinai so that was a really major opportunity for me and just like a really an amazing experience and what i did was i uh, provided resources for those that were actively getting their chemotherapy in clinic so an outpatient chemotherapy clinic is essentially a clinic where cancer patients go to during usually the daytime and get set up with their chemo infusions and they're there for hours on end and then they leave so it's not an inpatient setting they they don't get discharged they're just there for maybe a few hours or for the day and then they leave so what i was tasked to do in that um, center 
was to check in with new patients, um, do what we called like a psychosocial history. So getting information from them about like how they got to the clinic, transportation, where they're living, what their supports are, and how they're coping with their sometimes new diagnosis or sometimes chronic uh, diagnosis. And so if during that assessment I found that they needed resources, like they needed transportation, then I would be the person that connected them to the transportation. Sometimes uh, chemo uh, patients were uh, having a really hard time coping with the fact that they had, uh, like, of course, that they were dealing with this new diagnosis and dealing with cancer or their ongoing diagnosis, and so would provide short-term therapy services. Uh, in that chemo center, they didn't provide long-term therapy services. If a patient did ask for therapy, what the, my role or the social worker's role in the chemo center was to provide them the resources for long-term therapy. We did very short-term therapy. So if you're looking for more long-term sort of therapy work, um, usually a chemo center uh, does not focus on that. Um, but you really work on collaborating resources and doing that real short-term crisis intervention. The things that I really liked about working in the chemo center was um, the fact that I was able to learn so much about resources uh, for cancer patients like the American Cancer Society and other sorts of transportation resources for those that had a hard time making it to their appointments. I really loved engaging one-on-one -on -one in person. Now, this was way before the pandemic. This was in 2011, I believe, and so I really had the ability to work in person with these patients. Um, and so it was it's just something that was truly uh, an experience that I'll never forget because the in-person connections um, were just really special. The things that I didn't like about it were, you know, again, I myself am a very clinical oriented person. I love long-term therapy and developing those long-term connections with people. And so I found that that wasn't something that I was able to do working um, as a social worker at an outpatient chemotherapy um, unit. And then also the other downside was that you know, I didn't have appointments with the patients. I would kind of just pop in based on me knowing what their appointments were in the clinic. And so sometimes that meant that they were talking to somebody else, like a dietitian, or they're talking to their chemo infusion nurse. So it would be hard. So sometimes I would have to like keep coming back. And um, because again, there wasn't like that appointment it made it just challenging to actually sit down with them sometimes. And sometimes they would be sleeping while they were getting their chemo and obviously you don't wanna wake them up. So it was really kind of like on the chemo center's time. And um, of course with like appointments, you're able to just go in and talk like at the given appointment. So after I graduated, um, graduate school, I then got my first job right out of grad school as a hospice social worker. Again, still considered a medical social worker. So uh, a hospice, for those of you that don't know, is really palliative care and um, end of life services for people that have a prognosis of six months or less to live. And so the doctors uh, have already talked to the patients and their families and you know, the patients and their families have essentially already agreed um, that the their loved one um, is at the end of their life. And so that's actually one of the things that I liked about hospice was that uh, they were no longer receiving aggressive treatment, of course, they're in the home. And um, at that point, you've already come to um, understand, uh, likely understand kind of your prognosis and that you are at the end of your life. And so when you're working with a very specific population like that, they they really already knew um, what you're there for. Obviously, you're not, you know, the person there that's coming to tell them that uh, there isn't much time left. They already know that and essentially uh, can talk to you about that. So what a hospice social worker does, again, with a lot of 
or most medical social work positions is provide resources on um, different sorts of uh, like um, just things that the family or the patient may need. Uh, the social worker will then um, provide resources such as um, end of, mainly end of life planning. So uh, what I did a lot of was providing different uh, funeral uh, home prices and I know it sounds really morbid but I mean that's what you do as a um, an end-of-life social worker so another thing that I did as a hospice social worker was provide end-of-life counseling to the person that was passing away and also bereavement services for the family and really just being there um, kind of as a, a sounding board for a lot of the the patients and their family members um, what I liked about it was even though it wasn't long term, of course, you really meet patients where they're at and see this really beautiful side of things um, because a lot of them are able to reflect on the life that they lived. On the other hand, it is really sad because you develop relationships with the patients and their families and they all eventually pass away, the patients do, and that can be very taxing. and. Um, it's a grief experience, not just for the family, but also for the social worker. Um, during uh, my time in hospice, I had what we called IDT meetings, which are interdisciplinary team meetings once a week for two hours, which included the social worker, the RN, um, uh, the LVN, and the uh, doctor, the medical physician. And we would all report on our findings of like how the patient is doing and how the family is doing. And I really liked, that was my first real introduction to working um, with a team, with an interdisciplinary team. And that was very nice because it takes a very specific person to work in hospice. And that includes all the medical professional that work in hospice as well. Okay, hello, I'm back. I'm in a different setting now. So I know that there's a little bit of a transition. It's much later in the day. Um, I ran out of time earlier because I had to work and I really needed to take a break. So it's uh, in the evening now and so the lighting is different. So now let's go ahead and get into the last two uh, positions. So my inpatient medical surgical unit, which uh, in the uh, medical field we refer to as med surge. So I worked in the hospital as an inpatient med surge social worker and I worked with the general medicine unit, the surgical unit, and um, sometimes the ICU unit um, depending on kind of where my needs were um, for discharge planning. So in um, inpatient med surge the primary responsibility of a medical social worker is discharge planning. There's this really kind of well-known saying in the medical field that goes something like um, discharge planning starts at the time of admission. And that's really where social workers are needed in the med surge unit um, floor. So during this time, I really um, spent a majority of my time meeting with patients doing um, in um, hospital uh, intakes and initial assessments to gather data about where they live, what where they're going when they get discharged, um, what special needs they may have, um, and if their functional status has changed and if they have social support uh, networks. So a lot of the time we would get elderly patients and they would need to actually go to a higher level of care and so i would be responsible for finding a skilled nursing facility for them to stay at short term or if they needed long-term custodial care then i would provide really like education on what that looked like and help them cope with maybe you know this new sort of um, living situation because of course if you come into the hospital uh, before you come into the hospital and you're fully independent and you leave the hospital and you have all of these new dependencies and you can't live the same lifestyle it can be really hard to cope 
So I did a lot of crisis counseling, again, a lot of uh, discharge planning, and I worked also with a lot of the patient family members that would come to the bedside. In addition to that, I worked uh, alongside the doctors um, because they were really the ones that let me know when patients were ready to be discharged from the hospital, um, and again, what sort of um, discharge uh, environment that the patient needed to be placed in. So this was a very challenging job. It gave me a lot of experience. I did this for about five years, I want to say, and um, I was able to learn a lot about resources, a lot about um, crisis counseling and working in the healthcare field more so than any of the other medical social work positions I had. Um, but some things that I did not like about it was that it was so short term. I didn't get to develop um, long rapport with the patients. It was mainly planning on where they're going to go and kind of crisis intervention if they didn't want to go and talking through that. Um, sometimes there would be conflict with me and some of the medical team because, you know, a lot of the time medical providers do have um, this special part of their job, which makes them need to ensure that patients that are no longer medically acute stay in the hospital. And so there's kind of like this push and pull where they probably are getting push from their medical boss and then who is like the hospitalist and the hospitalist push, pushes down on the attending and the attending pushes down on the resident and the resident may push down on the social worker if the social worker hasn't found a place yet um, for the patient um, or there's a holdup in the discharge. So there would be a lot of conflict. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be real with y'all about that sort of situation. And because of that um, like kind of ongoing sort of dynamic. Um, I recognized that it wasn't like a place for me to be long term. But I did learn a lot from that job. And I think that anybody that is a social worker that works as an inpatient med surge social worker will learn plenty. And it might be a great place for you because you may like that really um, fast paced environment is extremely fast paced. Hello, I'm back. It is about four days after I filmed that um, last clip. It's because uh, it ran out of battery and I had to charge it and then uh, I just got busy. So now I'm back and I'm going to go into the last uh, position that I had as a medical social worker and that position was an outpatient primary care social worker. So if you're not familiar with an outpatient primary care clinic, this is essentially a place that uh, is not the hospital, it's uh, outpatient. And so that means that nobody is admitted, nobody is hospitalized in this sort of setting. It's kind of like a nine to five sort of business. So you may go there to check in with your primary care provider to get a checkup, to get your annual physical done, or if you have any sorts of medical concerns that you wanted to talk about with your primary care provider. So my role as a outpatient primary care social worker was to really provide the patient's resources and also to provide therapy. So when I worked there, I um, was able to have a certain caseload of patients that were looking for um, therapy services. And at the same time, um, I would see walk-in patients that uh, needed certain things. And so um, one of the responsibilities of an outpatient primary care clinic social worker is to do what's called a needs assessment the first time you meet with a, a client or a patient. And essentially that is like an intake assessment where you ask a lot of questions about their social history, like where they live, their income, all of these things, transportation, so that you can get a good idea of what they need assistance with. After I would complete that um, from a patient that would walk in requesting whatever it is that they were requesting, then I would help them identify the appropriate resources that were available to them. In the particular primary care clinic that I worked in, it served a majority 
um, of homeless patients and the homeless population. So a lot of the patients that were walking in to see their doctors also were needing a place to stay, whether it be temporary housing or more permanent housing. And so my job was again to do the needs assessment um, and confirm what their sort of benefits were and then um, get them set up with the particular resources that it, it was that they needed, um, including emergency temporary housing if they needed to get in somewhere that day, or if they had like temporary housing already set up and they just wanted resources on more long-term housing, then I would give them the resources for that and help them start that application process with HUD. Um, and if you're not familiar with HUD, it's the Housing and Urban Development um, Housing program for those that are in need of housing services at a lower cost. So um, things that I really liked about this position was that uh, I was be I was able to do like a diverse amount of things um, as an outpatient social worker. Not only did I provide outpatient therapy services and I was able to develop that those long-term sorts of therapeutic connections with patients, I was also able to um, have a break from that if there was, you know, cases where it would be like um, a lot at once, meaning, you know, the cases would be heavy. I didn't just primarily focus on therapy, so I didn't find myself getting like therapy burnout. Um, and I was able to do other things, which again included more like short-term resource um, provision services. Um, the downside of that was that um, for the people that did come in as walk-ins and, you know, for whatever reason didn't meet the criteria for certain resources or I wasn't able to get them set up with what they needed when they came in that day, they would likely be upset, which is understandable. Um, and then, of course, when you're upset, usually you get upset with the messenger. So that part was pretty challenging because, of course, I wanted to help as much as I could. So it would be hard when there would be some days where I wasn't able to get the resources ASAP available to the person requesting them. Um, so it really depends on, you know, what your preference is um, in terms of medical social work. Again, the positions that I did were outpatient chemotherapy center, the hospice social worker, the inpatient med surge social worker, and the outpatient primary care social worker. They all had uh, a lot of good characteristics about the positions, but they all also had some challenges. And so it's about finding kind of what works best for you. Um, I know the medical social work uh, like role is pretty popular and so um, a lot of people that come to my channel are interested, I think, in my medical social work blogs that I've done in the past. I'm, I'm now completely in private practice, so I no longer do that. Um, so I thought that I would be doing medical social work like long term. And that changed because, you know, I think as you know, you, you grow in your career, certain things change. So who knows, like give it a try, see if it works out for you. I hope this video was helpful for those of you that are interested in pursuing a career in medical social work and just wanted to learn more about the different sorts of positions and roles within that um, sort of umbrella. Um, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Until next time, managing mental health matters.